In this video, we're going to be looking at Venn diagrams. It's been named after a mathematician called Venn. Something very interesting is Venn was actually not the first person to find this method of drawing Venn diagrams. It was actually Euler who first started using these diagrams. So we should be really calling it Euler diagrams. But for the purpose of this video, we'll call it Venn diagrams. Okay, so we've got two circles here, B and Y. What I'm going to show you first is to show what regions of this diagram mean. So for example here, I've got B. So which part of this diagram is B? And of course, that's a very straightforward one. It's just everything in the B circle. So it's all of this bit. Everything in the B circle. Okay, so that wasn't that difficult, but we're just warming up. Now we've got B with apostrophe, and what that means is not B. So which region is that? This bit, and of course it's the outside as well, because that's also not B. So it's everything outside the B circle. Okay, so what does this mean? We've got B with a little N sign, and then Y. Now the actual name for this is B intersection Y, but I just call it B and Y. And what it means is, where is it both B and Y at the same time? We need to find a space where it's both B and Y. And of course, it's this bit in the middle. And this time we've got B as something which looks like a U sign and then Y. And the official name for this is B union Y but we can simply say B or Y. So we're just looking for any space which is B or Y or both. So it's this bit, this bit, and also the middle. So it's everything in the circles, this one. Okay, so now we're going to look at some questions with P in it. Now, all this P means is work at the probability. So before we simply had B, now we want the probability of B, and I'll show you how to do that now. Okay, so let's do the first one, the probability of B. So which numbers belong to B? And it's the five and the two. So in total, that's seven. Now, if P wasn't there, we'll simply say seven, and that'll be the answer for B. But since it not only wants B, it wants the probability of B, we need to give it as a fraction. It needs to be seven over something. And it's going to be seven over 11 because the total we have is 11. So the probability of being B is seven over 11. Now let's look at the next one, not B. So think about what we shaded before, which space is not B? And you should have said the three and the one, which is four. Of course, this time it wants a probability, so we're not simply going to say 4. We're going to do 4 over the total, which is 4 over the total being 11, if you add up all the numbers, including the one outside. Now let's try the next one, B and Y. B and Y, if you remember correctly, is the intersection. It's the space where it's both B and Y at the same time, and that's that 2 there. That two belongs to B and it also belongs to Y. So it's B and Y. So it's going to be two again over the total, which is 11. And the last one is probability of B or Y. So I'll give you a moment to have a go at this one. And B or Y, if you remember correctly, is everything in the circles. It's the five, that belongs to B or Y. The two, that's part of B or Y. And the three, that is also part of B or Y. So we add up all those three numbers, five plus two plus three. And that gives us 10. And of course, it's 10 over the total being 11. Now we're going to look at some very difficult ones. Now, a lot of people find these ones hard, including some A-level students, but let's see how we do. So it wants not B and Y. Now this one can hurt your brain. So I'll show you how I do it. So what I do is I go around ticking every place where it's not B. 
So I've ticked every place where it's not to be, the outside and in that region and in the Y region. And then I go and tick where it's Y. And then I go back to the question. It wants not to be and Y. It means it wants both of these at the same time. So which region was in both cases? Basically, which region is double ticked? And that's the region we're looking for. That's the answer. So if you do like this, it's not too difficult. Okay, now we've got not B or Y. So we're gonna do the same tick method. Let's tick every case where it's not B. And let's tick every case where it's Y. Now let's think about the question. It said not B or Y, so it could be either. So we just shade any place which has got a tick, whether it be one or two. Okay, so let's go to the next one. So we've got another tricky one here. So let's do the ticking method. So we're gonna tick every place where it's B and every place where it's not Y. So the outside is not Y. And of course here it's not Y as well. Now let's go back to the question. It's got an and there, an intersection. It wants both at the same time. And what that basically means, which region is double ticked? Which region was in both cases? So it wasn't too difficult. And let's try this one. We'll do that ticking method again to help us answer this one. Let's tick every region where it's got B and every region where it's not Y. That's the outside and here. Now this time it's not and, it's or. So we can tick every region which has got a tick, whether it be one or two. There we go, not too difficult. Now we're going to try some numeric questions on this. So let's try the first one. It wants not B and Y. So we'll do that tick method. We'll tick every place where it's not B, and tick every place which is Y. And if you go back to the question, it says and, or you can say intersection. So we're looking for the region which was in both cases, basically with a double tick. And of course, it's just the three. Now we can't simply say three because it's got P for probability. So it's going to be three over the total, which is three over 11. Okay, so let's try the next one. This, one, this time we have the probability of not B or Y. So let's tick every position of not B and every place where it's Y. This time it's or, so it could be either of the two. So we just simply look at every place which has got a tick, whether it be one or two ticks. So it's the outside, outside's got a tick, so we're gonna include that one. The three and the two. Three plus two plus one gives us six. So it's six over the total, six over 11. Okay, so if you'd like to have a go at the next two, pause the video and take five minutes to have a go. Okay, so let's do this together. So we're going to tick every place with B, every place with not Y, and the outside. And it's an intersection question. So it wants both. So we're just looking for the places with a double tick. And it's just and it's just simply the five. And of course it's over the total. So five over eleven. And the last one is B or not Y. So let's tick every place with B. Let's tick every place with not Y and the outside. Now it's or, so it could be any position, whether it be one tick or two ticks. So it's going to be the five, the two, and the outside. So five plus two is seven, and the outside we're including, which is one, which gives us eight. Eight over the total being 11. So they weren't too difficult, these ones. Okay, so let's have a look at this question. I'll give you a moment to have a read. So we need to complete the Venn diagram. And we're told that 30 people surveyed about languages which they speak. Now, the trick with these questions is to start trying to fill in from the middle. If you try to fill in from the outside, 
will soon get very stuck. So we don't want to fill in the first figures they've given us. For example, 13 speak English. We don't want to, f we can't really fill that in first because the English is this region here. Now, this region here has got three slots and 13 belongs to all of that region, but we don't know how to split that 13, so we can't fill that in. So don't try to fill those numbers in first. What you want to fill in is from the middle. And the middle, they've told us how many, and they've told us the number for the middle. How many people speak all three languages? It says two people speak all three languages. So we can fill that in first, and then we'll move outward slowly. We could do the next one as two speak English and Spanish, but I'm gonna leave that one for now. I'm gonna do three people speak both English and French. Now, where's English and French? Well, English and French is both of these regions. When it says three speak both English and French, it's talking about both of these regions. So if both of these regions add up to three, then the region we don't know the answer for must be one. So we can put a one here. Now you can see the English and French bit, the people who speak both, does add up to three. The next piece of information I'm going to use is five speak both English and Spanish. Now where is English and Spanish? This is English and Spanish here, both of these slots. And we know both of these slots are five because it says that in the question. Five people speak both English and Spanish. Now if both of these add up to five, we can now fill in this bit as three because we've already got two there. And now we can go back to two people speak French and Spanish, but not English. So where is French and Spanish, but not English? French and Spanish, but not English is only this region because although it says French and Spanish, it also says not English. So we can only look at this bit. We can't go into the English section. So it is literally talking about just this bit. So the number they've given us can go straight into there. So the next piece of information I'm going to do is 13 speak English. As I showed you earlier, English is everything in the English circle. All of this is 13. Since we know all of this is 13, we can subtract the three, two and the one, which in total is six from that 13, leaving us with seven and put that seven right in there. We put that seven right in that last bit remaining. Similarly, the next bit we'll do is 11 speak French. And it's very similar to what we just did. French is the whole French circle. So we can subtract that two, two, and that one which you already got there, which is five from the 11. And that leaves us with six. And see if you can fill in the last Spanish bit. So we know nine speak Spanish. So the whole Spanish circle should add up to nine. At the moment, we've got three, two, two there, which is seven. So we know the last slot must be two to make it nine. And the only thing we've got missing now is the outside. We need a number on the outside. And we know 30 people were interviewed. So we can do 30 minus every number we've got there at the moment. And I'll let you do that. And you should have got seven. So we've managed to fill in this Venn diagram and it wasn't too bad. The trick is to try to start in the middle if you can. So here we've got the probability of A and we've got a straight line and then B. And that means given that. That straight line means given that. So what this is saying is the probability of A given B. And what does given B mean? It means that B has definitely happened. So work out the probability of A, knowing that B has definitely happened. That's all it means. And I'll help you make sense of that now. Okay, so this question says B given Y. So it wants us to work out B, but it's given that Y has already happened. And since we know Y has already happened, well, there's no point looking at anything else. We might as well only look at Y because it's given that Y has definitely happened but we need to work out the probability of B. So now with these remaining numbers left, let's work out the probability of B. 
And from these numbers, only two is in B. So it's going to be two over the total. Now it's not 11 because all these numbers are gone. It's over five. So it's two over five. So it wasn't too bad. Let's try another one. Now we're asked what probability of Y given B. So we need to work out probability of Y given that B has definitely happened. So B has definitely happened. So there's no point looking at anything outside B, is there? Because we know that B has definitely happened. It says given B. So let's now work out the probability of Y. So with these remaining numbers, only two is the number we're looking for. That's the only Y there is, the two over the total. And of course the total is not 11 because the other numbers are gone. It's just seven. And if you do like this, these questions are not too bad. Let's try this one. This one's slightly trickier. It says probability of B given that not Y. So it says given that not Y. So if we're given not Y, let's only look at not Y. So where is it not Y? Well, not Y is this and this. So that's all we want to look at. So everything else is gone because it's given not Y. Now let's work out probability of B. So B is just the five over the total, which is six. And there we have it. I hope you found that video useful. Support us by liking, subscribing, and share this with your friends. And if you still got some more questions on anything, drop a post on our forum at examqa.com where you'll find your questions answered.